Have you ever heard a misleading discussion of the question of once saved, always saved? Hi, I'm Bob Wilkin with Grace Evangelical Society, and I have some good news for you today. Two Church of Christ apologists, Don Blackwell and Aaron Gallagher, have a YouTube video in which they discussed once saved, always saved. And they go through uh, a number of passages in what I would call uh, a sort of a theological filibuster. If you're familiar with political filibustering, that's where someone goes on and on and on for hours to delay a vote. Well, in this case, they go on and on and on, picking one passage and then another and then another in staccato fashion with almost no discussion of anything in the passage itself. And the cumulative effect is people who are not well informed may become confused. It starts out verse 19, brethren, so he's writing to Christians, if anyone among you Anyone among you, brethren, a Christian, wanders from the truth and someone turns him back, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way, so he's referred to as a sinner, will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. So that verse right there says, if a brother wanders from the truth and you turn him back, you've saved his soul. So that's a brother whose soul needed to be saved. Right, and it indicates that he can turn back. That's exactly right. And that's really the question here. Is once saved, always saved true? In fact, as we be begin this discussion, it might be good to lay out some other verses. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27, the Apostle Paul is speaking. He says, But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. And so the idea that Paul is putting forward is, I have obeyed the Lord. I'm out teaching other people to help save their souls. But he says, I got to keep control of myself and watch over myself because I understand I could be a castaway. What does he mean when he says he could be a castaway? He's referring to, to the possibility of him losing salvation. You know, and that's, that's pretty haunting to hear someone like Paul say that. We think, oh, Paul would never have a chance, but he writes that he could be. And, you know, even earlier in 1 Corinthians 5, that same epistle, he talks about in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, <clears throat> verse 5, deliver such a one, a Christian, to save for the destruction of the flesh that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. So that's two examples just in, in the Corinthian letter, and the New Testament's full of them. Here's another I'll mention uh, before we get back to the video. In uh, 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 20, this is written to Christians in general. The Bible says, For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world mm -hmm. through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that is, they've come out of the world, they've obeyed the gospel, they've been washed of their sins, they've become Christians, the Bible says they are again entangled therein and overcome. That's our very discussion. Yeah. He's asking the question, can a person be saved, go back into the world? It parallels 2 Peter 2 and verse 20. What happens? He says they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Now, if you look at the question and you parallel it with this verse, it lines up at the beginning. They come out of the world. They are again entangled, those two parts parallel, but then he's going to tell us you can't be saved. The Bible, however, says the latter end is worse with him than the beginning. What does that mean, incidentally? It means that it's worse to become a Christian and fall away. You know, I immediately think of Hebrews chapter 10. This is one of, just a haunting passage. Uh, verse 29, talking about people who sin willfully, written to Hebrew Christians. How much worse punishment, talking about that worse punishment than if he'd been born, do you suppose will be thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot? So it's talking about trampling the Son of God, Jesus, underfoot, and counted the blood of the covenant, Christ's blood, by which he was sanctified, a common thing, and insulted the Spirit of grace. It says this is someone who's been sanctified. That's a good point, because mm -hmm. sometimes I hear people say, well, if he falls away, he was never saved in the first place. But that says he was sanctified by the blood of Christ. That's this exactly is a saved right. individual. That's exactly right. You know, Second Peter 2 and verse 21, the next mm -hmm. verse says, for it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after having known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. And so he's indicating you were lost, you were saved, and you are lost again. It's a direct answer to the question. Sometimes people put it this way. They will say, you can't fall from grace. Listen to this verse. Very interesting. Galatians 5 and verse 4. This is written to Galatian Christians. Mm -hmm. Christ is become of no effect unto you, whoever are justified by the law. The King James says, ye are fallen from grace. 
And so we're told you can't fall from grace, but the Bible says just the opposite in those very words. That's right. And if you think about it, there was a, a Paul Harvey had the, if I were the devil. And if I, I think per, personally, if I'm the devil, what's a better doctrine than for Christians to say, don't worry about sin. You can live a life of sin. God will always draw you back. That sounds really good, but it's very dangerous. And even in Hebrews 3.12, it says, beware. Now, I'd like to just take a few minutes in the same kind of rapid fire way. I'm going to give a brief response. If you go to our website, faithalone.org, we have articles, lengthy articles on all of these passages. And I have some YouTube videos on these passages as well. But let's go with the first passage, James 5, 19 and 20. They point out that the person who is falling away in James 5, 19 and 20 is a brother. It's a fellow Christian. That's right. And they talk about the fact that if someone turns him back, they will save his soul from hell. Actually, the text says nothing about being saved from hell. And actually, the expression saving the life uh, sozo tain psukain uh, refers in James 1.21 and throughout the New Testament and in the Greek Old Testament to saving one's physical life. For example, Noah and his family were saved in the ark. That is, we're told in 1 Peter 3, eight souls were saved. James 5, 19 and 20 has nothing to do with bringing a brother back so that he can regain his salvation. No, once a person is saved, they're always saved. And James 5, 19 and 20 doesn't contradict that. They also talk about 1 Corinthians 9, 27, where Paul says that after he's preached to others, he's concerned he might be disqualified. They actually quote the, the uh, King James castaway, and that's one of the more unfortunate translations because while in 1611, castaway might have meant someone who was disqualified or disapproved, it doesn't mean that today. Uh, and the actual word is adakimas, and Paul was afraid he would not be approved by Christ at the judgment seat of Christ. The issue here is not that Paul was afraid he would lose everlasting life. The issue is he was afraid he would lose Christ's approval. In 1 Corinthians 5.5, 5, Paul says, that he, the church was to deliver such a one to Satan for the destruction of his flesh. And they say, well, that person is a Christian. I agree. That his spirit might be saved in the day of Christ Jesus. They don't discuss what saved means there or the day of Christ Jesus. The day of Christ Jesus refers to the judgment seat of Christ. And you can look at some articles I have at faithalone.org showing that the day of the Lord Jesus Christ always refers in the New Testament to our coming judgment, the coming judgment of believers to determine eternal rewards. The issue here is not that he destruction of the flesh doesn't mean he would be killed. It means the destruction of his fleshly inclinations so that he might be spiritually healthy at the Bema, at the judgment seat of Christ. That's what that his spirit might be saved, might be spiritually healthy at the Bema. They also discuss 2 Peter 2, verses 20 and 21. And they talk about someone who has escaped from the pollutions of the world and then goes back into it, and they say their latter state is worse than the beginning. And they say, well, see, this proves they lose their salvation. No. The issue here is someone who has been climbing on the path or the way of righteousness. It does not have anything to do with those who are, are simply come to faith in Christ. These are people who have begun on the path of discipleship, and then they fall. And the point that Peter is making is, if you begin to advance in the Christian life and then you fall, you can be in a worse state 
after you fell than before you began the path of discipleship. And we see that all the time, of course, in rescue work, that lots of people on Skid Row are people from wealth, from power, from influence. They're doctors, they're lawyers, they're people who uh, have trust funds, they're wealthy people, and yet they've had this great fall. Finally, they discuss Galatians 5.4, where Paul says, You have become estranged from Christ, you who attempt to be justified by law, you have fallen from grace. And they say, see, falling from grace refers to falling from salvation. No, the word charis or grace means God's favor. And if a believer falls into legalism and thinking he can be justified by works, then he has fallen from God's favor. Actually, it is these two apologists who are promoting legalism. They are promoting the gospel of the Judaizers of Galatians 1, 6 through 9, and Galatians 5, 4. And they are guilty of trying to get people to fall from the experience of God's grace. Once saved, always saved, that's right. The Lord Jesus Christ said that whoever believes in him will never perish, will never hunger, will never thirst, will never die, will never be cast out. Look at all the nevers in the Gospel of John. It's real clear that the moment a person believes in Christ, they're saved once and for all. If you like what you heard today, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And remember, keep grace in focus.